I wonder what happened to our butt cans. They're in the van. Y'all save your butts. And then we'll get started and we're going to rock this town for Jesus, man. Be sure our stuff doesn't blow away. Welcome, friend. How are you? Yes. Father, I just thank you for today. I thank you that as you give us stuff and we learn to set things up and we learn to bring a quote church building downtown you allow us to be the church wherever we go and that we as we are gathered today in our little tribe our little pinky toe of the bride of christ i thank you that your presence is here i thank you holy spirit that you are here with us and that we've come together in your name lord because we're going to not only worship you we're not only going to hear from you but we're going to fellowship and commune together and we're going to build each other up so that we can go out into the world and be a light in the darkness um, Father, as the darkness gets darker, may our lights get brighter. And we thank you that we have the ability to be bright because of Holy Spirit, because of what Jesus did, because of your sacrifice, Father. So we want to sing to you and we want to worship you. Will you receive it? Receive it as a fragrant offering. No matter how motley it sounds here, may it be absolutely beautiful to your ears because that's how much we love you. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Amazing love, how can 
ADHD. I thought you were fighting. She's okay. already thinking about stuff. <laughs> you tell him to jump. All right, guys. On this next one, that chorus, you got to push it out there. Glory to God, glory to God, glory to God forever. Yes. That's what it's all about. Amen.
receive it You can feel it Somebody testify You can leave it If you receive it You can feel it Somebody testify Father, I thank you because not only do we get to worship you, but we get to hear from you. I thank you that your word is active and alive and sharper than any two-edged sword. That it not only divides bone and marrow, but one day it's going to separate sheep from goats. And that you're going to say to those on your right hand, come into everlasting life with me. And you're going to say to those on your left hand, depart from me, for I never knew you. So, Father, we want to know you more today. We want you to grow our faith that's within us. I know it may only need to be the size of a mustard seed, but there are days it needs to be the size of Mount Everest. There are problems and things that we suffer with, and there are things that the walls are closing in around us, and it seems like we finish one thing and something else starts, but you never, ever, ever, ever leave us or forsake us. So will you speak to us today? Give us words that not only will change our hearts, change our minds, but change our lives. Father, we need to hear from you. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. i got a few places I'm going to bounce around today, but I'm going to start out <clears throat> in Romans. Because I believe that the Lord has something to tell us. Raise your hand if you have struggles. What's up, Rain? Hey, baby. We all have struggles. It doesn't take a roof to have struggles. It doesn't take a roof to not have struggles. It doesn't matter where we are or what we're going through or whether we're 12 or 22 or 82. We will struggle. Jesus told the disciples, in this world you will have trouble. Well, that almost sounds a little bleak. But then he says, but take heart, because I have overcome the world. Jesus overcame everything that mastered over us that was not of him. Honestly, I feel sorry for the time period between Adam and when Jesus came back from the dead. Because that law that they had to live under, you had the top ten, and then you had 613 more... That's a lot to have to keep up with. I understand the top ten. I got the top ten. The top ten still apply to us today. And they're really just basic human decency. But those 613 really made life difficult. But the problem is, they were never completely satisfied that side of time. We are blessed. Hear me. Say, I am blessed. I am blessed. Y'all sounded terrible. I am blessed. I am blessed. There you go. I am blessed because the law of sin and death does not reign over me anymore. I have overcome. I may have troubles, but I've already won, y'all. I am fighting from victory, not to victory. Like, it's already done. Andre, are you listening? I love you. It's already been taken care of. There is no more debt to pay. All right, so you go to the store and you get all your stuff, whether you got food stamps or you're paying cash or you're going to duck and run. It doesn't matter. Somebody's going to have to pay for that food. You'll have to eat. you got to pay for it. You 
break the law, you have to pay for it. You have a home, you have to pay for it. Everything in life has to be paid for except our freedom in Christ. It's already paid for, y'all. Amen. Amen. Exactly. It's already paid for. Whom the Son sets free is free indeed. And it is for freedom that we get to walk in Christ. So, the deal is, I want us to have an understanding that our faith in Jesus, this is uh, Romans 5, starting in verse 1 in the Passion Translation. Our faith in Jesus transfers God's righteousness to us, and He now declares us flawless in His eyes. Oh, it don't matter when I accidentally mess up, and y'all remember, we're not called to be perfect, we're called to be holy. I was working on the car, getting trying to get our, our car, but y'all notice my car's back? Oh, Yay! Black Betty? Oh, Black Betty's back. I love it. Okay, well, we were working on getting it back last Sunday, and, and we had to drive an hour's drive and then an hour's drive back. And then, oh, something else was wrong, so we had to drive an hour again and then an hour back. So on that second drive there, I'm, I'm a little bit brain dead, and I ran the stop sign. I didn't, that's exactly what I said. I stopped twice at the next one because I was like, I don't do that. I, that's no, just that's not me. You know, if it says the speed limit 70, I put it on 70. I put a cruise control because this brain has a hard time staying in the rut. You know, and so. And, was it because you were talking on the phone? This is the radio talking to me. And no, you were asleep. No, you weren't asleep. You're the one who pointed out. You said, baby, you just ran that stop sign. Oh, my goodness, you should have felt it in my heart. My heart just jumped up because, I mean, there wasn't anybody coming. There wasn't a police officer there ready to give me a ticket. It's that the stop sign means to stop, and then you go, and I missed it. But I said, oh, Jesus, I'm so sorry I did. I mean, it just, I don't know what happened my brain. I just didn't see it. I'm still, I'm not perfect, but I'm still holy. Y'all with me? Does that make sense? So, our faith in Jesus transfers God's righteousness to us, and He now declares us flawless in His eyes. This means we can now enjoy true, lasting peace with God, all because of what our Lord Jesus, the Anointed One, has done for us. Now, hear me. We do not get saved to get out of hell free. We do not get saved to go to heaven one of these days. We get saved now so that we can enjoy the freedom in Christ now. Heaven comes and dwells in us. Within us is righteousness because Holy Spirit dwells in us. And I live each day as if I am holy. It doesn't matter what happens. Somebody tries to trip me up. Sorry about your bad luck, but it's not happening to me today. I know who I am in Christ. I know that I'm a daughter. And because of what Jesus did, I now have the ability to live. It says we can now. It doesn't say we can enjoy one of these days when we die. It says we can now enjoy true and lasting peace. That doesn't mean peace that's just fake and it's only going to last for just a few minutes and the shine's going to wear off. And it doesn't mean that it's only for four days of the 30 days of the month or six months out of the 12 months of the year or eight years out of the 32 years you have till you're called home. It says right now, right now, right now. Y'all say right now. Right now. I have lasting peace. I have lasting peace. Man, and that could, if we could believe that, it would be fun to live in. You know? I mean, I live in it. Your, my car is dead. Two weeks ago, your car is dead. Oh, this is not a $30 fix job. This is an expensive fix job. And every time I turned around, he got it all back together. And then he said, oh, you need a radiator. <sighs> and then that didn't work. And so now we need plugs and spark wires. And, so it was, and then I need this thing that makes it run V8 all the time because it's not good for my engine to drop four lifters and just run on four cylinders in town. And come on now. <laughs> but you know what? I, this is not my truck. It's God's truck. And God's going to make it run. God's going to provide the finances for it, and God's going to make it run because God's called me to do something, and if nothing else, I'm his kid and he loves me. It's as simple as that sometimes, but we make it very, very difficult, but we can now enjoy true and lasting peace. So when Adam sinned, the entire world was affected. Every human being born after that was affected by what Adam did in the garden by his boneheadedness. Okay, we're all born into sin. 
But we all get freed the same way, and that's with Jesus Christ. When we get free, whom again, whom the Son sets free is free indeed. And if we could just get that understanding, then we would be really, really, really excited about it if you could just have the understanding that I have. So you get a ticket. So it's criminal trespassing. So it's camping where you're not supposed to be camping. Now, I'm going to lovingly put my arms around you if it's a public intoxication ticket. And we're going to talk about the things that set us free, and it's not alcohol. Remember, y'all, I tried that. The answer was never at the bottom of a Jack Daniels bottle for me. <clears throat> Paul writes in Romans 8. It's really windy. All my papers are going everywhere. Paul writes in Romans 8. Starting in verse 1. So now the case is closed. Y'all get that? The case is closed. It's not open for debate anymore. The case is closed. There remains no accusing voice of condemnation against those who are joined in life union with Jesus. Now, when life sucks and you're not a born-again believer filled with Holy Spirit, life does suck for you, and I'm very sorry that it does. If you want to take care of it, we can change that situation right there. But until you become a born-again believer filled with Holy Spirit, life does suck. It does. Because you don't have the winning team captain in your ball court. And you do have the accuser constantly berating you, constantly tripping you up, constantly condemning you, constantly getting you into situations that just is more trouble and more trouble and more trouble. We don't get trouble when we've overcome the world. You get trouble when you haven't overcome the world. It sucks to be on the losing team. It does. I know. I was there. I mean, y'all just got no idea. Y'all got no idea who I was before Jesus. None. None, 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 So by the case is now closed, there remains no accusing voice of condemnation against those who are joined in life union with Jesus, the anointed one. For the law of the spirit of life flowing through the anointing of Jesus has liberated us from the law of sin and death. Now that may not make sense, so I'm going to explain it to you. Remember I said, I feel sorry for everybody from Adam until Jesus came back from the grave. Because those folks were under the law of sin and death. That was the, that was the, new, that was the old covenant. The old covenant was sin and death. It never completely freed you. Now don't think Jesus is a, a bad guy or, or the Father is just a douche because he's taking care of all of that business. He's giving them the ability to be under the law of grace. New covenant, Jesus comes back from the grave, has fulfilled all of the old covenant till we're in the new covenant. And that's the law of grace. Here's the deal. When you incorporate Jesus into your life instead of dying to self and giving all your life away and becoming a new new born again believer when you incorporate Jesus you got one foot in the world you got one foot in the law of sin and death and one foot in the law of grace and what we tended to do was continue to pull the card that said I need grace again pull the card that said I need grace again I'm sorry Lord I missed it I need grace again I'm sorry Lord I missed it I need grace again I'm sorry Lord I missed it I need grace again I'm sorry Lord I missed it I need grace are you with me I mean talk about walking around the same tree over and over and over again and wondering why you're not getting a different result because you haven't surrendered you incorporated Jesus didn't say, I did all of this so that you could be, I call it cheeky. That's my word. Because I have a problem saying half a butt. You with me? Do I need to say it? Half ass. I have a problem with that. I have a problem with that. You can't do something halfway. And because I have a problem with that word, I just decided, I mean, if you think about it, a half a butt is a cheek. So cheeky. You can't live a cheeky life. And expect the Lord to bless it. You can't live a cheeky life and expect to conquer darkness that comes against you. Darkness is always coming against us. We live in the darkness domain. This is the enemy's world. He is the Lord over this world. It's his territory. But I'm not of this world. I just happen to live here right now in this body. When I became a born-again believer, I got born-again 
spiritually, and I'm now written in the Lamb's Book of Life. I am now eternal, and I'm just here hanging out in this cavity until the Lord calls me home. And eventually I'll get a glorified body. My spirit and my soul, the person that makes me me, okay, if I got my legs and my arms cut off today, or tomorrow, or whenever, I would still be soul and spirit of who I am eternally. This body doesn't, this body is not me. This, my personality, my love, my mindset, my joy, my peace, that's me. Okay, this body is nothing, just it's what I'm hanging out in. Y'all with me? Does that make sense? And so, if we have an understanding that the law, the old covenant, didn't give people that freedom, come on, y'all. Why are we taking it for granted? Why are we always going, I'm sorry, Lord, I need grace again. I'm sorry, Lord, I need grace again. I'm sorry, Lord, I need grace again. Why? Why would we do that? Why wouldn't we appreciate what's been done for us, understand what it's like to live in the new life in a holy union with Jesus, fighting from victory, not to victory, filled with Holy Spirit, walking in an, whom the sun sets free is free indeed. I think that's the message today. Whom the sun sets free is free indeed. Okay, so Paul, who wrote most of the New Testament, wrote it from prison. And all he wrote about was freedom in Christ. Not all, that's not all he wrote about. But he wrote often about freedom in Christ. Y'all, he's in prison when he wrote that. Because prison doesn't determine if you're free or not. Free is here. Free is here. I am free. I, my body aches. It does. I got arthritis because I didn't pay attention when I was younger. And I worked way too hard and all that. Okay, but that has nothing to do with me. My name is Mary and I'm a daughter to the King of Kings. And that's it. And there's freedom in that. And I have been set free from all my addictions. I have been set free from my struggles. I have been set free from my codependency. I have been set free from depression. I have been set free from bipolar. I have been set free. I have been set free from all of it. Because when I died to self and was born again, all that stuff died with me. Does that make sense? It all died with me. I don't pee. Okay, so if you were to bury an animal, because it's against the law to bury people without authorities, I've been told. So if you bury an animal <laughs> and you keep it in the ground for a very long time, 25, 30, 50 years later, you go back to dig up Rover, and Rover's not there because what happens when you bury something? Eventually it turns to dust. So my old life, because I buried my old life, it's been dead for so long because I was crucified with Christ. He died as me, not for me. And when I buried my old life, it has turned to dust. I couldn't go back and resurrect it if I wanted to. I go, well, this piece of dust has got pink on it. It must belong to me. And this piece, you know what I'm saying? This piece of dust has got blue on it. It must have been my eyeliner. My old life is dead. There is nothing to go back to, and the freedom I have living in Christ, born again because I have co-unioned with Jesus, all his stuff is mine. Everything is mine. I am a co-heir to the throne. I am royalty. I'm an ambassador here on earth, but one of these days I'm going to spend all the rest of my days living in the kingdom of God. And in the meantime kingdom of God is going to come dwell here. So that when I come across somebody foul and nasty, I can just come up to them and love on them in the name of Jesus. Because they're just, they're just lost. If they're not, they wouldn't be foul and nasty if they knew who they were. You see what I'm saying? They just need Jesus. That's just my answer. You don't need antibiotics, you need Jesus. Because when I've been crucified in Christ, I'm still living. But not really me living, it's Jesus living in me. In the life I'm going to live in this flesh, I'm going to live by my faith that's ginormous, y'all. Ginormous. I'm going to live by that faith in Him because He is who He said He was. And you can prove He was real without using the Bible at all. Use the historical references. You can prove Jesus was who He said He was. And there was nobody. I mean, if somebody's been dead for three days, they haven't decayed yet, there should be a body. There was no body left in that tomb. So something happened. And there were too many witnesses to prove that he walked around on the earth after he came back from the dead. 
Yeah, he walked through walls. The disciples are hanging out in the upper room and they're all scared for their lives because they still didn't exactly know what was going on. We're not going to diss them because we're 2,000 years later reading the whole story. But they got it. They got it later. They really got it later because each one of them died a horrific martyr's death. Horrific. If it wasn't true, you'd have said uncle. Or they would have said uncle. Oh, just kidding. Come out of here. That's not. They said, this is true, and if you don't believe it, your eternal life is at stake. That's the thing for me. And when we are dead to self and alive in Christ, there becomes fruit on our tree that shows who lives in our heart. Y'all, I can have heart surgery, and the heart surgeon is going to go, oh, there's nothing wrong with your heart, except there's a guy in there named Jesus. <laughs> That's it. Because he makes up all of me. 2 Corinthians 5, 17. Any man or woman that's in Christ is a new creation. Okay, the analogy, you can't put new wine in an old wine skin because that is Jesus incorporated. You can't take Jesus and put him into your life because your life will explode. And then what happens is we end up turning away from him. Um, anybody know who Billy Graham is? Yeah. Oh, wow, well, cool is that? Hey, he was an amazing man. And what he did for the world in the crusade for Christ was awesome. But in the beginning, Billy Graham, the, pe the person that they thought was going to be the Billy Graham that we now know, um, his name was Ron... It didn't matter what his name was. The guy that was going to be the Billy Graham, there was two of them that started this thing. He decided it was all a sham, y'all. And he walked away, and he wrote a book that said, I kissed the Lord goodbye. And he died without his faith in Jesus. So here's the deal. You can't lose your salvation. Don't walk away today and think, I know that I knew the Lord, and I know that I got saved, but what I did this past weekend might have lost my salvation. No, God's never going to take back the salvation, but you have every right, because of free will, to give it back. And that's what this guy did. I kissed the Lord goodbye. That makes me weep on the inside. That makes me weep. I don't even, I don't want anybody of our tribe to do that. I'll come after you like stink on poo, and we will get it right because our tribe's going to show up in heaven, and we're going to be the loudest ones there. That's my goal. We're going to step into heaven, and we're going to have so much peace and joy and just outsanely much love for Jesus that he's going to go, I've been waiting for you guys to get here. I have watched you work, and I have seen you love on those that the world considers the least of these. And they're the apple of my eye. You know, in Matthew 25, he said, when everybody gets there, and you've got the great white throne judgment, and you have the sheep line, and you have the goat line, and he's going to talk to these guys over here. And he's going to say, you know what? I was hungry and you never fed me. I was thirsty. You didn't give me a drink. I was naked. You didn't clothe me. I was sick and I was in prison. And not one of you fools ever showed up. And they're like, but Lord, we did all this stuff for you. He goes, yeah, but you didn't know me. Depart from me. Ugh. And then over here, there's going to be some of us that are going to go, what? He's going to go, I was hungry and you fed me. Okay, I've never fed Jesus, but I have fed Jesus. You with me? Because he says, what you did for the least of these, you did for me. Now, I think you guys know me well enough that you know that's not why I do it. Okay? I've been here. I know what it's like. I also have been lost and know what it's like without Jesus. And I know what it's like to have the freedom in Christ that whom the sun sets free is free indeed. Y'all with me? I've said it 20 times today. The thing is that that freedom gives us the love and adoration to obey with every word, every thought, every action because our Father loves us so much. You with me? Does that make sense? Y'all, it's, it's on and popping. 
I've never been to a better party than a Jesus Holy Spirit filled party. Ain't no party like a Holy Ghost party, y'all. That's it. And we have to get to that place that when we walk into the darkest of dark, people go, whoa, you are bright. Yeah, that's my Jesus, y'all. Let's get our Jesus on so that there will be 30 more people here next week. Who are you going to tell about Jesus? Who are you going to share the love of Christ with? How are we going to... And okay, so maybe you're here today and you're like, oh, I'm not in any position to do that. Oh, yeah, you are. You, everybody here, except there's a couple of new folks, everybody here has hung around me long enough. You have gotten enough information you ought to be able. You just don't know because the enemy's whispered in your ear that you aren't there. You are there. Thank you, Jesus. You have forgiven me for my sin. And I'm walking in the newness of life. Yeah, I messed up, but I am holy because you are living in me. So I'm going to pick up dust off. I'm going to not do what I have done before. Okay, we're not pulling the grace card every time we turn around. You with me? We're not pulling the grace card every time we turn around. You with me? We're not pulling the grace card every time we turn around. You with me? This is a repeat. Gotcha. Thank you. Because His mercies are new every morning. His mercies are new every day. His grace is always present. His love is never ending. He said He will never leave us or forsake us. you got to share the gospel because whoever you're talking to right across from you may not be going to heaven and I am not okay with that. Are you with me? Amen. Let's set this town on fire, y'all. I'm serious. Let's set this town on fire. Holy Ghost fire. More, Lord. More, Lord. Give us more. More, Lord. Y'all with me? I want to see fruit on the tree. It's time. It's time. Father, light us on fire with a torch. Throw some gasoline on us and let us be a shining light in the darkness so that we can go and be in co-union with Jesus and that we can share your love and the good news, the good news that we don't have to live lost and or as an orphan, that we can just be sons and daughters and share and love and feed and clothe and visit and give drink the living water the bread of life we don't need anything else but that we don't need no stinking roof we don't even need stinking shoes love and joy and peace and living water bread of life the fruit of the spirit lord that's what we want growing off our trees the fruit of the spirit speak to us holy spirit Fill us up. Fill us up. So that only you come out. When the world squeezes us, only you come out. We want to lay everything down. Oh, I just felt a serious wave of peace. We want to lay it all down. Your cross took care of all of it. The sacrifice you made took care of all of it. All we have to do is let go. And not listen to the lies of the enemy, the accuser. Let us only hear and listen to you, the good shepherd, because we are your sheep. Let us spend this week coming, living out loud for you and Holy Spirit, fire. Fire, Lord. Holy Spirit, show us, speak to us in dreams and visions and whisperings in our spirit and in our ear and encouragement from one another so that we set a blaze of path that people want to follow. Don't let us get distracted. We're here about one thing, and that is you. Amazing, Abba, my daddy. Thank you for your love, your grace, and your mercy sobriety, freedom, new ways of thinking, our new hearts, forgiveness, unconditional love, all of it. Most of it's foreign to us. Help us to become used to it because you love us so much. I praise you and thank you for that. I thank you for our food, our tribe, our needsless stuff. And just the love that you've given us. And I pray all this in the powerful name of Jesus Christ. And all God's people said, 